Hello, this is Bernard Height, and look, I'm glad to be here with you tonight as we dig into another great area of scripture in New Testament. We're going to be at the address of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Again, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Look, go get your Bibles. I've got mine. This is the um, the GNT version um, that I'm going to be reading from, and we're going to dig into this thing. And first of all, I pray that you're doing good. Let's start with a quick prayer. God, we pray, Lord, that you be exalted. God, that you um, remind us, God, about qualities and principles, Lord, about you. And more importantly, that we can use them in our life in a practical and real way. And they can shape our, our vantage point of the world as we go out and try to be lights for you. Um, God, allow us to be covered in hope and encouragement. And we lift up all the prayer needs of those who are listening right now and let them know that you hear them and you can help them deal in this season with whatever circumstances they're dealing with. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. All right, so with that, we're going to be in Matthew 7 and let's let's read the um, the memory verses all together one time so we can get, get it. But it says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive and anyone who seeks will find. And the door will be open to those who knock. Would any of you who are fathers give to your son a stone when he asks for bread? Or would you give him a snake when he asks for a fish? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. The word of God for the people of God. I pray that be a blessing to you. Man, that's an exciting one. Let's dig into what it means. I've entitled this message, Better Than a Genie. Better than a genie. And before I start off, let me let me take you way back to when Bernard was little B. I'm talking about when I was a kid. And I grew up around a lot of these, of these key Disney movies. One of my favorite movies was Aladdin. Come on. How many people? How many people? Come on. Those who are in the group chat, come on. Come on. Throw a throw a thumbs up if you're in the group chat and you enjoyed Aladdin. There's no group chat. But if you enjoyed Aladdin, I want you to throw a thumbs up and um, and give give us give some love. And as you were reminisce about that great story that's there, and I think it takes place in Arabia or somewhere somewhere in the Middle East, right? But we know we know how it goes. We know about Jasmine. We know about the parrot. We know about Aladdin. We know about the rug, and we know. I think it was Robin Williams was the, if, I, if I've got it right, Robin Williams was the voice behind the genie. Remember that big blue genie? And he had the little belt, the little kind of bracelets, right? That He's the do his thing. And the, the key plot in that story is that there was a, really a, a, a thief in a way, right? Uh, that kind of grew up and came from hard times that came into um, a city and there was a beautiful princess there and they met on accident and he kind of fell in love and but because they were from two separate parts of of life right it was kind of nothing it would be a miracle for him to be able to be able to have a relationship with the princess of this whole country right and so long story short there's there's some you know a, a bad I think Javar was the the name of the evil um, guy, but they found this little um, bottle I guess you can call it a bottle or I don't know what you call it. it looks like a teapot you know what I'm talking about that gold teapot anyway he rubbed on it and poof the genie appeared and was on the scene and the genie kind of laid out kind of the how how it works and in 
And that's the part where I really want us to focus, right, in the story. We think about Aladdin. Of you get these three wishes of whatever you want, and that and the genie is obligated to give you what you ask for. The genie is obligated to give you what you ask for, but you only get three shots. You only get three shots. And so the movie goes on, and we know how it ends. But um, unfortunately, Javar gets his hands on it. And so the genie is asked to do some evil stuff and has to do it. And that, that kind of makes the climax of the movie. But then the right person gets the Aladdin gets his hands on the um, with the genie. And then finally, they, they're able to put um, put Javar away. And then in the end, Aladdin, out of the kind of his heart, kindness of his heart, he frees the genie from the bondage of being a genie. But anyway, great, great story. Love it. Big up to um, to Disney for, for doing a, that's an oldie but goodie in Aladdin. And I think that's a great way for us to start off this message as we think about the key topic of better than a genie. So what am I talking about? Remember, my address is Matthew 7, 7 is where we start. But it starts off with ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Now, right here in this settlement, uh, Matthew is reminding us first, before you get to that 7 7, he's talking about us not being judgmental. It says, Do not judge others, and, and, or you will be judged. Or in the same way that you judge, others, others will judge you. And that's a key element. Then we see the uh, really popular scripture. And common one that we talk about the speck. You know, how do we see the speck in, in someone else's eye, but yet pay attention to the log in our own eye? And so as he's walking through that, then as he's walking through that, he's he's talking about he's warning the people not to give your give things that are holy to dogs, right? Because they'll turn and attack them. And he says, Don't throw your pearls to to pigs, because they'll just trample on them. So this is like hard stuff, you know, walking. Walking for the Lord, walking out for the Lord can be hard. So you're trying to motivate. And that's where he gets into right here at at seven and reminding them that if you're you're bewildered about how do I be a light for Christ and in trying times like this where where people are 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 judgmental and um, there are dogs out there that are uh, that'll that will attack attack me. Right, for if I give them my good stuff, or or they'll they or like I'll throw my pearls to pigs and they'll trample on it. Right, all that stuff is, you know, sometimes you'd be like, what what do I do? But he right here is the answer, is the solution in a way where he's saying that you can always ask God and you will receive. You can seek Him and you will you will find, and then knock and the door will be open to you. And the funny thing is, I think the significance, the biblical significance here is is important that it's said twice. If you keep reading, then it says, for everyone who asks will receive and anyone who seeks will find and the door will be open to those who knock. So whenever you see something twice, I think God is really trying to tell us something here. That first of all, that God is a helper. God is our source. He's and we're reminded in the beginning that He's the Creator in the heavens of the in the heavens of in the of the heavens and the earth, right? Everything in it. And we got to remember that we can go to Him and He can help us. He can help us with what we need, and He will deliver. And just like and and this will be think about the topic, the title for this message being better than a genie. Yeah, God can has the power to do anything, right? But it gets even better than that. He can deliver on your ass. He can deliver on your ass. So that's the first point. The second point I want you to get really goes in as as the part after that, that we're, he really kind of brings down the relationship, the father and son relationship that we have in our personal relationship with him, of being the father, right, in us, right, being his the, ch- the children of God. We see the analogy kind of take place here at verse 9 where it talks about, Would any of you who are fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? So it pulls it, so it it brings into question, it asks us to go and evaluate the familial relationship that we have and how 
For our kids, we always want to try to do the best for them. Right, we don't want to give our kids, they ask us for something, we don't want to give them bad gifts, right? Or bad outcomes or, or, bad, or bad situations, right? We always want to have do good things for our children. That's what the crux of what it's saying. Or would you give him a steak when he asks for a fish? Now for parents out there everywhere, I'm praying you say no, right? But it's really asking us to reflect that, man, we've got a lot of love for our children, right? And I'm talking about here in the natural. We love our kids, right? You love your kid. You always want the best for them. And if you take that same relationship and you reflect it on kind of our real relationship that we have with the Father, right, that we have with God, that he loves us, and he wants good things for us, it's modeled here. It's modeled here. And it talks about as bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. So even though we, we don't get everything right, we always try to make sure our children, most for the most part, have it better than we had it. Right? And so that that's a key key distinction. But it, it, it right here gets to the main point. How much more then will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So we can be reassured right here in scripture. God is, I tell you, he's preaching this message. This is this is it. He said, look, I've gotten the source. If you ask me and I've got it and it's of my will, look, you look, it's good. You're gonna receive it. If you do, you move by faith in, in your actions and in, in your ability toward the things that God has for you, you are going to find it. If you stand and exert and persevere and knock at that thing, the door will open for you. I mean, that's some, that's some great reassurance, right? That I tell you, the, the, the maker, we've got a relationship with the creator and he's sovereign and not only is he sovereign he's all powerful and he's able to provide for us and he's able not only to provide the the tangible but he's able to provide the intangible elements the confidence the the strength the love lord he can he can he can give us the what we need to get his will done okay so that's a big distinction and in the very end here it says do for others what you want to do for them do for you right we see the golden rule right we talk about the greatest commandment love one another as, as others uh we want others to love us right god wants he's he's beating home that point to us right here in scripture and so it's it's key that we key that we get it do on to others as we want done for us but that's the model and that's kind of what and he talks about that's the essence of of the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophets. And we know where it talks about in scripture about the greatest, what, it's, what was the greatest commandment? His response was love the Lord God with your all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And love thy neighbor as thyself, right? So that that is, that's the, that's the key distinction. Now a key point, I wanna just provide a contrast here. When you compare God to the genie in, our, in the Aladdin story, the key, the big difference is this. You only get three things with the genie, right? You only get three things with the genie. And also the genie is going to give you whatever you ask. So if you ask wrong, you're going to get something that's, that could harm you or hurt you or not, you know, or, or be a detriment, right? That's with the genie. That's with the genie. But a big distinction here, and I think it's important that we get the context of this, because sometimes we can take what we want to hear. I will say again, sometimes we can take what we want to hear in this, in this part of scripture of, oh, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. Well, what if I want some carnal stuff or immoral stuff or, or things that are not good for me, right? What I love about this is, this is where we get to my title. He's better than a genie. The genie would have to, he was obligated to give you whatever you asked for. And the sad, the sick thing, and it is sick, we have, unfortunately, that false understanding or the false myth or thought that God is a genie, that I can just sit and pray for whatever I want to satisfy me, 
and God's going to give it to me. And I think the, uh, the great thing is just like he is the good father, we've got to remember that he also is sovereign and knows and he also he also wants, has his will and he's going to always abide in his will. And so the great thing that we get that we can never get out of a genie is that he loves us enough sometimes not to answer our requests. He loves us enough to say no when sometimes we're, we're pleading for a yes because he knows and he can see on the other side of those some of those requests that we have, it's not of his will. And so God is not going to ever give you things. He's not going to ever grant you the things that that um, are not according to his will because he loves you so much. And so that's why he's better than a genie. Everybody say it. He's better than a genie. He's better than a genie. That was my, that was my attempt to get my own crowd echo. But team, look, that's what I wanted, I wanted to share with you today. This is going to be a short message, but I, I want us to reflect on the genie and come to the realization, the truth that God is not a genie. He's better than a genie. He loves you. If you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, that door will open. And he gives good gifts. He cares about you enough to only give you the good stuff, the stuff that's meant for you to be able to get there. And then we're always reminded that as God is modeled with us, the ability to give us good things, we need to model and follow that model as we work in the kingdom, right, amongst other people. We want to be making sure we're doing good things and doing onto others the same things that we want done onto us. So that's the essence of this segment of scripture here through Matthew 7, verses 7 through 12. I pray that something be said here to just reassure you that if you're going through, ask him, talk to him. He loves you in a real way. If you don't know Jesus, I want you right now to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that in your heart that God raised this guy, Jesus, that came for you and me. He died on the cross, got back up on the third day with all power sent it up into heaven, made room for us. We got the gift of the Holy Spirit that gives us the power, God that dwells inside of us and will be with us forever. All that's wrapped up in Jesus. So Romans 10, 9, just to be straight, if you confess to your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, then you're saved. So I want you to um, reflect on this message that he's better than a genie. And I tell you, let's go, let's go get, get it on with the Lord. Be blessed. <laughs>